open the meeting now at 5.04. Is, is it, are we open? You are open and recording. Can everybody hear? Sally, Bill, can you hear? We can. Okay. I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Sally, I can. You know, um, Molly, Mary, John. I think I know everybody, but I'm Joyce that you appointed without me being here last week. So this is what you get tonight. Um, so we'll try to do the best we can and keep everything within the hour is what our time frame is. So if we can, um, you know, do that, that would be great. Uh, we did have here uh, our mission statement that Melvin wanted us to all have. So uh, I guess we'll have to get it to you and Bill. Um, I don't think it's on. I can't see here. It's on. It's not on the website, right, Molly, or is it on the website on the the posting? The uh, on the posting, the mission statement. I don't think so. No, no, it was not. Yeah. Okay. So the new business um, tonight will, is going to be the Collin Center, and they have given us, how can we get this to them that are on Zoom? Um, are they going to be able to see? Are you going to put it I can put it up. Mel? Yes, I can put it up. So Mel then is going to put up um, a discussion for uh, what he has for our work plan. Don't let it scare you because it goes to 23 meetings, as John said, so... We're going to try and see if we can not have 23 meetings. But anyway, that's uh, the plan here when he gets that up and will get a, give us an idea of how we're going to proceed or what we should be expecting to do at each meeting. Okay. Melvin? Uh, yep. Uh, let's see. Is this one right here? Mm -hmm. so, Right. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, welcome, Joyce. And we had a good meeting last week. Uh, it was mostly uh, an overview of, of uh, how um, communities would uh, start to review their organizational charter and some of the background around that. And today, what we'd really like to be able to do is um, to develop a plan uh, approach, um, you know, with a with a time frame and and some milestones that would allow you to complete your work. Now, having said that, um, we have developed a very generic type of a, of, a, of a plan, one that gets you a complete charter, and we built a lot of um, um, room in there for, for doing that. It's very possible that um, we're not talking about as expanded as, as a scope of, of a full charter, or perhaps uh, you won't need to spend as much time on various elements of the charter. But what we would like to uh, explain to you is how we go about uh, working with a committee and um, and trying to attack all aspects of local government organization and structure. Um, now, I will say that um, having the, the mission statement was helpful uh, for us because we hadn't seen it. You know, this project started in part from an initiative of the uh, former town administrator and the HR director and um, the last one we had seen was a draft that they had prepared and as uh, Molly mentioned uh, and, and provided uh, there was a, a more streamlined and I think a more um, uh, comprehensive type of a, a mission statement so that's good um, having said that um, you know we have um, in order to, to do a whole charter it could easily take a year and 20 some odd meetings. And if that's not the scope that we're talking about, we'll need to adapt it for that. And we can do that. Um, so let me just tell you generally how this works. And then uh, Pat will, will explain uh, perhaps, uh, you know, how a, a particular subject would, would, would get taken up. So um, usually what we will do is we'll take um, elements of town organization and in the order of a charter, of an actual charter. So the executive branch, the legislative branch, elections and town meeting and um, other elected boards and so on. 
there is a fairly standard um, approach or a, a format of charters. And whether you're doing a full charter or not, um, you know, going through these elements, uh, we are we are assured of, of, of covering every every aspect of a town government. That doesn't mean every government is different. In fact, every government, local government, is actually is 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 much different. And within that, but within the, within the uh, elements, we're sure to kind of identify areas for your concern, for your decision making, and so on. Um, what we usually do is we prepare a memorandum in each section. And that memorandum would include um, probably, well, I'm going to let Pat talk about the memorandum and the kind of elements that, that we would identify in order for you to, um, you know, to reach. It could be that when you get to the, uh, uh, let's say, executive branch, you go through it, but you're not ready to really de decide anything yet because you want to get a little further on in the process. Maybe you want to get to your first public meeting. We have two public meetings built into here. Um but you know, we'll, we'll then we'll go back to it. So, uh, Pat, um, why don't you uh, tell the committee a, a little bit about how we would approach this? And we are going to do this, frankly, without us being here because we are limited into the number of meetings that we can attend. So we're trying to try to do it in a systematic approach that you'll sort of get aware, familiar with how we we do things and how and the kind of decisions you need to make. Okay. So um, one thing that we find is a very helpful tool is to, in between meetings, um, we'll talk to your chair about what the plan will be for the next meeting. Um, then Mel and I often draft a memo, um, and that may include, um, if, if we're working on one particular, what we would call an article or section of a charter, that would include sample language and decision points along the way so that you can get together as a committee um, and make some make some of the decisions that are going to shape your charter. Um, Can I just ask one question? Does sure. this mean that if you're developing a charter, that it's going to take over what we already have in place as town meeting? And no, no. But the charter is going to it's the charter is basically going to be fill me in the blank. Um, a charter. Um, is going to be a comprehensive document, and that will um, detail what you already have in place. So there are, um, right now, your town is governed by a series of spe um, special acts or, or um, state laws that you've accepted, your local bylaws and regulations that you've put in place over a number of years. So you'll notice there's no one place you can look at in your website where you can find the answer to all the questions in a single document. And um, a charter is a comprehensive document that um, it documents the systems you already have in place and um, leaves room for you to make improvements in areas that you want to especially focus on. Okay. Um, it can be completely, you know, what you have now. Um, we understand there's been some expressed interest in looking at the executive branch. Um, there can, you know, so we can show you what you have in place. Um, for example, um, for your town administrator, um, you have bylaws in place which establish qualifications, term of office, and duties and responsibilities. That is one place where you could start with a charter for the um, for the town administrator portion of a charter, or you can make additions, changes, et cetera. Okay. Um, so our memos often include, you know, it may be a two-step process. For example, you may have two meetings on the executive branch. The first meeting it, you may make some decisions or talk about what are things we might want to keep the same or change, um, and then let us know what you've decided, and we can put together a memo that includes draft language, decision points where you will have to, you know, decide, oh, do we want um, the town administrator to have this authority, or do we want someone else to have that authority? Um, make decision points along the way. Um, that we can use to, as we go along, craft the charter. Um, and can I just, just to knit, making sure we're sure. clarifying, when you say we could make decisions along the way, 
but it'd be more appropriate to say we can make recommended changes along the way. I just don't want anybody Absolutely. listening to this thinking that our yeah. committee is we're we're discussing it and we're we're making recommendations that hey maybe we should change the town administrator's role to include X. Yeah, I I, I think if people in you clarifying that you know as a committee that's not our job to make the changes, it is to do the recommendation to the select board so that they can make the changes if they need to or bring to, it to, to, tell to meeting. the town yeah. meeting, you know, if that's what we're, exactly. we're going to do. So Exactly. Yeah. And, the process really starts here, but it goes to the select board, then to the town meeting, then to the legislature, and then it will come back to this community as a, as a referendum, a vote. So um, I, I just wanted to make one point, and that is you don't have a charter now as Pat said, you have all this uh, sort of consolidated uh, hundreds of years of, of, of all this stuff you've done. A lot of it, quite honestly, you probably don't even know about, or it doesn't cover everything that you really would want in a, in a, in a, in a document like this. So you're going to have to, even if you say, we want everything to be the same, we just want you to document. The problem is, uh, well, that's there are things that aren't covered anywhere, and you really have to Put them in writing, and sometimes you do. You've you've operated through a tradition, and it works. You know, everybody understands how it works. But now we're forced to sort of put it in writing, and sometimes that creates some some issues. So it's not just taking everything that that, that you got and, and sticking it in the charter. It's not that simple, and that's why it's important to go through them a little bit and um, and and think about it as a charter. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sure. No. And, and when we say decisions, what we really mean is you are going to be pulling together your recommended language. Uh, but along the way, we're going to encourage you to have at least two public forums. Um, and, and also, um, we've had a lot of committees that are present at town events to answer questions and just solicit a lot of input. So it's a starting point and you may make changes along the way as you gather input. Um, but what you need to start with is something to show people to get the input on. Mm -hmm. um, so that is going to be, you know, some language for the public to consider. Um, even before you finish your process, you'll be taking input from the public and maybe making changes on your own. Um, and then you'll be presenting your recommendations to the select board um, who will make some decisions on their own and possibly move it out to the um, town meeting form. Okay. Just to clarify, the executive branch we refer to the town administrator and the board of select, the select board? Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Currently, I don't believe in the bylaws there is anything that talks about the select board. I mean, it's obvious select board is an integral part of mass law for cities and towns, but um, in a charter, you would want to at least describe the select board and and include that. So um, it would be in the executive. In this document, we also include some background materials and some possible presenters. Um, and this is not a, you know, a definitive list yet, but it's an example. So for example, if you were dealing with the legislative branch, that's meeting six and seven on this particular, you might want to, um, well, you want to look at what you got now in the bylaws. You want to maybe look at a town meeting warrant uh, and we're going to uh, put together our memo. But you also might want to talk to the town moderator or the town clerk um, if you're talking about the way uh, town meeting works. Um, it's, it's you know, we don't know exactly how things work here. Uh, every town is a little different. And especially when you don't have a charter, there's ways that things have evolved and work. And you need to understand those, not only the formal, but the sort of the informal ways things happen. Because if we're going to, put it in writing, it's important that you understand how it works. You do have a couple of special acts that we've noticed. I think the Department of Public Works was created by a special acts, and we'll need to look at the terms of those special legislative acts and make sure we coordinate those with our effort. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so as you, as you go down, you'll, you'll notice that, you know, we, we just do it very systematically. Um, executive branch, legislative branch, and elections, and then um, um, the uh, other elected officials, and so on. And so what we what we do is we usually put two meetings. But, um, you know, for the thorny issues, 
two meetings you will need. You'll, you know, the more comprehensive uh, articles, you'll need two meetings to sort of understand. Maybe you want to listen to some of the officials, read our memo, develop some questions, and then we'll come, you know, we'll take care of it the next meeting. And we can either check it off or say, you know, this is going to be on hold for a bit because we really need to understand how another section of the town government works before we can go back and, and adopt that. Um, you, you notice that we did put in two public meetings. They're the ones in um, here. I, I'm, I'm only seeing one page. Meeting 13 and 21. Uh, yeah, no, meeting 13 and, and 21. And the idea there is try to get enough uh, work done that you can then present to the public rather than uh, you know, not have anything. It, although the meetings are intended to, to generate information from the public, you do have to give them some background and context. And we think that uh, when you get to a certain point, that's good. You're not too far along the process, but you're not too far, um, you, know, you, know, you know, you're know, not too uh, limited to, to get public input. So um, we identify where those are, but we are really looking for you to uh, determine, you know, how you get information out. How does this town um, have formal um, hearings or forums about uh, important events. And if I could just add to that, um, I would say along the way, while you might not be ready for a public forum right away, um, you definitely should be ready to start thinking about getting public input. Um, perhaps you'll have an email address. Um, we may have discussed this last time, an email address where people can send their suggestions to the committee. Um, have a website dedicated to your committee where you start to put all the documents that you've gathered up online, you know, starting with your mission statement. Um, and so that the public can follow along with this. Um, we'll, there will be all, there also is built into this some, um, some opportunities to invite boards or department heads or in other important officials into, into the meetings so that they can have input as well as explain to you how things are being done. Um, so the, is this going to change or whatever? We already have a bylaw committee um, that has been set up. So bringing them in to have a part of it or they're just not in on this at all? We, I mean, we could certainly ask them you know what what they've been working on they have two uh we have last night our select board we approved two articles they're bringing to town meeting floor but you know like one of them has to do with uh, you know uh natural waste in the streets and who's responsible for cleaning it up you know they're kind of there right now okay. i'm not aware of the fact that they're doing anything more from a structural standpoint but it, but definitely in their conversations some of these things may have come up be nice to hear about. Yeah, I think it would be good, and and uh, you know we we want to be coordinated. You will always have a bylaw. You will always have a bylaw. The charter exists up here, but your bylaws also exist, and they're subservient to the charter, but they're very important. And you will continue to have bylaws. So we think it's important to have a bylaw committee. In fact, if you develop a charter, we'll probably that bylaw committee will probably be busy because they'll have to adapt a few things uh, okay. to, to 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 meet the charter. I'm just wondering if, as we go through these different steps, uh, if it would be helpful or, first of all, would it be appropriate for us to see sample charters from other towns? Absolutely. And um, serve as kind of a model for what, who we may want to go or may not want to go. Right. And and that is, a, yeah. And, and it's great to look at samples, and we'll provide you with some samples, but also think about if if there are some communities that you feel are, you know, working or nearby or neighbors that you would want to emulate, let us know as well. Um, the, the interesting um, thing when looking at other charters is just looking at the charters themselves, it's almost impossible to determine are they working well? Are they happy with their charters? So there's a little more to it than using that language, or there might be the best best language is grabbed from different pieces from other charters. Um, so absolutely, with each section, um, we can we can give you some model language um, that we've pulled from what we think have is the most um, up to date version of 
charters. And um, every town is unique in itself on, on what the community expects out of the town and out of the town government. So trying to keep within history, but expanding on future is, I think, probably one of the things that, that we look at or should look at to see where, where we're going. One of the things sometimes we'll do in our memo is we'll create a little spreadsheet and tell you how other communities are doing certain things. So we're not giving you language, but let's say it's, um, I don't know, who, who appoints their, elects their town clerk versus appoint, for example. And we will we'll give you a list of communities that are sort of in your same population range and show you. Um, sometimes those are important because you need to make decisions even before you, you develop the language. It also gives us people to talk to if we're if somebody's been doing a change we're contemplating and ask, you know, okay, you did this 10 years ago. How was it? Did it achieve the end result you wanted? Or? Well, the same as when we combined or made the town, the treasurer or the, and the, collector. And the collector, not elected officials anymore, they're appointed. So we did that in, in, in doing that type of well. Um, Thing, not making them elected. So yeah, we're, we're aware of what, what you did there. And we had read, we asked about that because there was a Department of Revenue report about, uh, I don't know, about eight or years ago or so. And eight one years the, ago, uh, probably. No, it wasn't that long. But they did make that recommendation that they uh, yeah. confirmed that you did that. So that, mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, Show some willingness to do some of that. Now, uh, Doris, one of the things that um, you didn't hear, you probably know this, is uh, Hadley, is, is, its population is such that you can't make any significant changes in your form of government. You may not. Your, your population will not allow you to create a representative town meeting. You have to stay with an open town meeting, okay. and you're unable to adopt a uh, council or anything other than a town meeting form of government. So to some extent, you know, that creates a good framework. So a lot of communities that we work with are it's an open slate, and they're looking at everything. Um, and that will be important as we. You know, I, I think um, one of the main things, what I'm understanding is, is the town administrator and how we feel about what her status should be. Should there be a change in, in more work for that town administrator to undertake or have the responsibilities? Um, I think that's one of the things that I think is what this is coming out of is how. We want to proceed with the next, you know, town administrator and what we feel that her job should be. Is it somebody that is uh, uh, has more? I don't want to say power, but you know, uh, authority. The, authority. Yeah. yeah. Than yeah. what the, our president once had had. Well, the good thing is that you know that's one of the first um, subjects we'll be we'll be tackling. Mm -hmm. um, so. Which is good because we're in the process of hiring the administrator. <laughs> but unfortunately, the, the new town administrator will be appointed for this study. Well, design. and with the understanding probably that there might be a change in her <laughs> yeah. duties or his duties, you know, of what might happen. So I think that has to be out there also. <laughs> okay. Where do we want to go next? I, I guess we'd, we'd want to make sure that we're in sync with you that that what you're talking about and the mission statement that, you know, we, we really just grabbed, uh, we should have this, but is, is this, you know, do you, are you looking to um, uh, do this as comprehensively as, as we've laid out? And um, not necessarily the number of meetings, but um, do you want to look at uh, everything from A to Z in your, in your organization? And that's one thing that... Yeah, you know, you know just speaking for myself, um, we don't know what we don't know, you know, and I, it, and it may be that we get into a particular topic and we're like, ah, let's just, well, let's, let's move on. But I, you know, I would rather make sure we at least touch upon everything. Um, I love the idea of having a charter document, even if, it's merely memorializing the way that we operate today and we decide that we don't want to make any changes in that. And I and I say that just like literally within the past 24 hours, somebody's working on updating a, a manual um, and was asking really good questions because she doesn't know better. 
And I say that meaning that she hasn't been that involved. She's approaching it more from an editor's eye and saying, well, if I was reading this, I would also want to know, you know, this, this, and this, you know, so what are the answers to those questions? Two of them were easy. And then the third one, it was like, no idea. And then we went to, you know, reached out to a previous town administrator and other people like, does anybody know like what the answer to her question is? So it would, you know, again, the idea of one stop shopping for clarity. Um, and, and I would say, and I think Joyce certainly has experienced this. Uh, when you talk about engagement with the general public, oftentimes people attribute authority and responsibility where it doesn't, it doesn't lie, right? And so people can become really frustrated because they think that the government's not being responsive to them. But the answer is, we we just can't do that. We don't have the authority to do that. The process is you need to go here, there, there. Um, so it, again, I like the idea of if nothing else coming out the other end of this, having all of this memorialized and no longer subject to interpretation. So, Bill or Sally, do you have the admission statement at all? I do not. I do not. Uh, I think we saw something uh, at the last meeting, but I don't think uh, there are any handouts. Get those emailed over to you. Could you... I would like everybody's email if I could. Um, can I give you my email just so that it, you can, and then I can send things to you also. Sure. Um, it's JC Avion, A V I O N 3 at hotmail.com. Can you say it again, Joyce? You cut out a little bit. JC Avion, A V I O N. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I could just point you to the, sort of the last page of this document, this work plan, and as you see the meeting 22 is that you complete your committee report and recommended charter language. And that's what we see as the deliverable of this committee and most committees. They're actually doing a written report to the select board who appointed you. And you are, um, you know, talking about your process and how you went about it, uh, what your recommendations are, and um, if you are recommending charter language, definitely the, the terms of that charter language. And um, and then from there, select board de decides whether to, uh, you know, create a warrant article for a town meeting and then uh, move it on um, to that. So uh, just so you're aware, there will be a, a sort of a final report here with with a, a charter language, if that's the way you're going. Okay. Can I ask a question just about one of the sure. uh, one of the suggested meetings? Yeah. Citizen relief mechanism. Yes. So and then it says there. possible presenter town clerk. That's under meeting 15 and 16. Yeah. Listen. Back sure. Um, what charters contain um, in, may include, um, for example, um, what charters contain may contain language and opportunities for residents to participate that you may not see right now. Um, for example, um, right now you do have with your town meeting the opportunity for citizens to put matters on the warrant. Uh, that is one way that citizens can participate. Um, there are other citizen mechanisms such as the opportunity for um, recall. Uh, of elected officials. Um, that's usually done through the special act process, and that would be included in the charter as well. Um, because your town meeting um, will we'll talk about other opportunities, um, for example, how do you get something on the ballot for, you know, the either um, a referendum, a question. referendum question. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also talk about as part of your town meeting process, um, what opportunities are available um, for citizens to get involved from a, at a grassroots level to ask for a matter to be heard by to be heard by the board of selectmen or the select board 
Um, and and we'll go through a list of what other town meetings are doing, what other um, towns are doing, <clears throat> excuse me, so that you will have that right in your charter so that people can understand what mechanisms are available to them that may be outside the usual process of the select board and town meeting. Mm -hmm. What is the role of the town attorney, the legal representative? The town council. The town council. In so, terms of this whole process? Sure. Um, any charter language that you recommend will definitely need to be re reviewed by the town council before um, it goes on the warrant. Um, towns choose to do it differently. They, you know, right now there's nothing to review. You don't have anything together. But at some point in the process, as you get closer to your final recommendations, um, the matter should be reviewed by your town council, who can make suggestions of changes or um, can take a look at it from a legal perspective, make sure whatever goes on the warrant is consistent with their understanding of state law. Should that be done maybe at, at each stage of the development of the charter or we, towards the end? We find that it's a choice of the town's attorney, but oftentimes um, because you may, have, you may have looked through certain parts of the charter um, something later in the charter may refer back to that part. You should probably have a substantial amount of your work done before an attorney reviews it. We may recommend you may have an you may have questions along the way, like can we make this position? Um, can we make this position in, in, in an appointed position instead of elected? Or it, would, there may be some questions that we can't answer that will say that's a good question for your town council to approach them before the end, but in general, they're going to want to see a substantial amount of the we writing work done. We don't use them unnecessarily across money. No, <laughs> we, we, we usually get pushback from them saying, well, yeah. we can't look at you know yeah. a third of a charter. We need to yeah. look at a little bit yeah. more than that. Well, a little more. But sense. you know, I, I will say, uh, who is your counsel here? Uh, Lisa Mead. Okay, you yeah, know, we're familiar with them. And, yeah. Uh, you know, there's, uh, we, we do a lot of work. Um, Pat's a lawyer. Um, there's a legislative drafting manual. This is eventually going to the legislature. So there are uh, a lot of precedent there. It's not, we're not making new ground and new language usually. Uh, we're kind of mixing and matching, but uh, the basic language is usually stuff that's been out there for a while. So we, we don't find typically that when it gets to the council that there's like fundamental changes, there's a lot of tweaking. And, and we'll find the lawyers might say, well, this part isn't entirely clear. Let's make it more clear. Um, we, we try to focus on using language that's been vetted and is approved by other charters um, because your goal is to, um, should this go through the select board and town meeting, your goal is to have the legislature approve it as well. And we want to make sure that the legislature let legislature isn't looking at language for the first time and have no clue what it's about or where it's coming from. So we will use a lot of language that's already been vetted. So looking at this going further, mm -hmm. are we into meetings two and three or is this the first one we're doing tonight? This is meeting two. This is meeting two. So it's two and three, kind of combine them a little bit. So I'm thinking at the next meeting, the Department of Revenue, do we want to review what they gave us eight years ago? I think you should. Okay, so maybe you have Jennifer sent to everybody the, the DOR report. The DOR report on that. Yeah, I think it's right on the town website. Yeah. Well, should be. Should be. <laughs> um, Is that 2018? Do you remember? 2018, 2019? 17. Yeah, 2017. 2017. And the special acts we've done are just the, uh, that's just the uh, town clerk and the uh, treasurer. The, the, the collector treasurer. Collector treasurer. And then we if we do have a recall. Right. Um, one recall vote. Oh, yeah, so 2003, yeah. somewhere in there, early 2000s. Okay, we're going to have to find that. We one. need to do some re more research. That wasn't listed on. Uh, yeah, that was before I came out code. to the select board. I was elected 2003. 
that was before that. This is why out. a charter is so important because special mm -hmm. acts can come and go and people mm -hmm. don't know them. And mm -hmm. um, we, we would have to really understand the special acts in order for us to do our job. So yeah, we'll yeah, we had a, and the, the, the town had an issue with the select board member at the time. Oh. So they applied the special acts so they could do a recall vote, yeah. which they ultimately did. Oh. Yeah, and we'll do some research, and, and the town clerk is also usually a great wealth of information. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, just, you know, as far as understanding um, things like how your town meeting operates, um, you don't have much about town meeting in your bylaws. You only have the fact that there will be a town meeting. Um, so, you know, I first think, Thursday of May. Right. So we, I think we can assume that most, most of it is comes directly from the mass general law. Oh, um, but you know, we, we need to find out if there have been any other laws patched in along the way. Okay. So what do you need to have us do for the next meeting? We're just going to get these documents, the Department of Revenue. Yeah, I think you'll get a memo from us. Okay. You and, and I will chat. And the Department of Revenue. Um, you know, we, we might give you a, um, you know, could give you the whole bylaws, but I don't think that's going to be useful. Uh, we'll give you the executive or administrative portion, but um, you might want we might see if there's a table of contents that you can always refer back to because we're going to be always referring to your bylaws. We're going to say, you know, in the executive, um, it says this in your bylaws is, you know, uh, do, is that the way it works? And if so, we're going to, you know, do we put it in the charter or leave it in the bylaws? So we'll be constantly going back and forth with bylaws. So, Convocation project of the bylaws a number of years ago now. So theoretically, it should be easier to. Yeah, they're, they're not too bad. Yeah, they're, they're actually, yeah, they're, they're in pretty good shape. Um, what you might want to do, both for the committee and for the public, is when I talk about creating a page for this committee, mm -hmm. um, put certain documents like a mission statement, a link to the bylaws so people can look okay. things up. Um, and then, so when we're talking about it, or when the public is talking about it, it's right there at their fingertips instead of having to find where on the town website are bylaws. Right. Where on the town website are the town meeting rules? Um, so as we start to collect and put these together, then they'll be right at hand to work with. Well, we don't need to have all of the bylaws at hand, do we, right now? I mean, that's a lot of. No, we'll, we'll we'll provide you the the documents that we think are important for that next okay. meeting. Okay, right. But um, you know, it would be nice to have a link if you wanted to, and you know, you could easily uh, look at them online or mm -hmm. print out what you want to. But okay. We'll 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 uh, we'll give you the bylaws that we're going to be talking about. Okay. Okay. And we'll probably start with you know, as this mentioned, so we'll look for a sample of you know, some charters to look at. Mm -hmm. um, but I also will want to give you, um, we'll have an outline, we have an outline. Um, a lot of the charters go back a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, and they really have evolved into a place where there are a certain number of articles or chapters and things are put in a certain way. So you may, we may not find a charter to show you that is a more up-to-date version of one. So we'll give you an outline of some of the sections of the charter so you see where you're going before we start. Okay. Uh, and as you said, we'll, we'll talk before the next meeting okay. so that yeah, you know before exactly. Yeah, the agenda, that would be good. Right. So you have to post it yep. at least by that Monday or Tuesday if we're going to continue with Thursday. It has to get posted. I think you were going to talk about your next meeting dates in November. I did have that on the agenda. Is is that all you'd like to share with us tonight? <laughs> I don't want to cut you off. I guess we would. We just want to know if you have any questions on the process. Is there any other information? Bill or Sally, do you have any questions? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so we were going to discuss. Well, we already went through the timeline. Um, that was the old business and um, setting the meeting. So. Thursdays, are they good for everybody? Yeah. Yes. That seemed generally what people landed on. Okay. So I guess just looking at um, <clears throat> the month of November, that is it too much to do the first and the 
third Thursday of that month. It was the seventh and the twenty-first. You don't want to. Well, mm -hmm. The twenty-eighth is Thanksgiving, so we're definitely not doing it then. So, mm -hmm. uh, does that sound all right? The seventh and twenty-first, mm -hmm. seventh mm -hmm. month of November for those two dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Joyce, you and I may have an ambulance oversight committee meeting on the seventh. Okay. We can move that to the fifth, maybe. Uh, well, I think if we're trying to court, you know, we're wrangling cats right now. Okay. So if that's the only night that works, I'm okay if you're okay just making that like six thirty or so we can go from one to the other. Okay. That sounds all right. Are you going to be starting at five, Joyce? I, I would I would prefer the five, and okay. then we can just do it from five to six. If five to six works okay for everybody, mm -hmm. okay, so we'll do five to six. That works pretty good. All right. Um, so we were the old business, and I don't even know if that goes here. Is discuss current hiring process involvement of HR director and department heads um, coming to these meetings, and I guess now that we have this. Uh, more or less protocol or materials that we got yeah. from uh, Mel that at this point, uh, I don't think the HR director is, is involved at this point with um, this process anyway with, with the town administrator. No, we have um, a brand new HR director. She just started last Almost week. Monday. Yeah. yeah. So, so it would be pretty, pretty daunting for her to come in. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> sure, she'll be interested in the outcome. The process is a but what is her name? Uh, Lauren uh, Wilcox. Yeah, she was experienced. Um, comes from a, a school district in Connecticut. That's great. Yeah, so she's. It's she's, possible, that, you know, when we um, go through these, that there will be some discussion. I, I think it's likely that there will be discussion about what the town administrator's authority or influence or not for other elected boards and bodies. So, um, you know, we might not want to tackle that one right up front, but um, it, we will identify that. And um, I know, Molly, you asked, like, what about this section or that section? I, what, what we found is everything that you could possibly, any Operation Town, we will cover in those. We know that. Mm -hmm. We've been through experience. So if you say, where, where are we going to cover that? We can tell you. Or if you say, I don't think this is included, we'll say, oh, no, that's in... Um, uh, this article, uh, it it can be in different articles and different charters, but um, you know we will definitely cover all the issues um, that that come up. And it and it is daunting that you know as we're hiring or the town is hiring a new administrator that um, with this charter things may change with her job duty and what her expectations might be. So it's it's kind of like an open ended hiring process i think for an administrator you have the basics of what it is but it could change right right and we talked about that up front a little bit and um because this question was was asked um during a presentation um with the search firms that we kind of met informally with and we're in the process of, of you know going through procurement to to hire a search firm um, we specifically asked, you know, we just kicked off this form of government with the Collins Center. Um, two of them immediately said, yeah, you just need to be forthright. You need to make sure that, you know, there's no bait and switch, so to speak, um, but that they actually had instances where they were in the exact same situation with other towns that were doing it. And they said that's something that the applicants need to be aware of because, you know, the greater likelihood is that they may wind up with more authority than they're originally hired for, as opposed to, I suppose, could go the other way, authority being taken away, you know, um, so that, I mean, the search firms didn't seem to think it was an issue, but yeah. you, and you make to me, it's like, you know, it's, 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 I mean, if you were talking about a whole soil change in form of government, or you're talking about taking away authority um but this is sort of the other way around yeah. mm -hmm. it's like when we gave our chiefs are they a strong fire chief right strong fire police chief you know is this the same thing or are we going to have a strong administrator oh. you know there's all kinds of mm -hmm. scenarios that you can go through mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take that in the water. Oh, nope, I'm not. <laughs> so, so once again, you kind of uh, suggested that to find existing charters that might be somewhat of a match with Hadley work, um, that many of them are somewhat antiquated. Or I mean, is it possible to find old pairs of towns that are comparable to Hadley? That have had their charters approved recently, and so you're dealing with modern language and terminology. We'll we'll take a look and yeah. find the best examples yeah. that mm -hmm. we can give you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's some may have sections, some may just have town manager acts that mm -hmm. are more recent, mm -hmm. yeah. and you know, you might be able to plug to be plugged into that section. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you're going to find something that's going to match on all four corners. Okay. But um, we'll, we'll definitely take a look. But also, you know, feel free to to all do your own research. And if there's a community that you're interested in finding out more about, um, you usually find their charters online or let us know and we'll make sure we get it for you. Yeah. And maybe you can shoot a, a quick email uh, to Lisa Mead as well. I mean, because the law firms are dealing with this and just ask them. Not because they're all over the state, you know, if they can think of any recent activity they may have been part of in townships. And do you remember the, the break? So the 351 municipalities or whatever, is it over 200 are towns? Oh, yeah. Right? It's the oh, majority. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. And most so, of them are small towns. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Um, I think that it, it's really not so much the antiquated nature of the charter it's i think pat was saying they're not in the right form or they're not like a, a they're not created like a comprehensive charter but they may have very good aspects of their charter that we will use there's a whole group of towns around 128 of boston and they all developed these town, town manager or town administrator acts in the 40s and 50s and uh, they're good but they're not comprehensive charters but the stuff in them we would we would definitely look at mm -hmm. but when you look for a charter so let's say you look at the town of Concord for a charter. You really won't, it won't it's not really called the charter. It's called something else. And I think that was the point. Mm -hmm. But um, we know them all. And, you know, we know the ones that are modern and the ones that are, are old. But still, we will use them all when we develop some language uh, that, that fits Hadley's situation. Okay. Let's move forward, right? And you and I will chat. Melvin and I. Yeah. Um, the is there a particular day of the week that's good for you to, you know, uh, on a regular basis, we could just check in for less an hour or less? Tuesdays are good. Tuesdays. Okay. Good. Well, well I can make time any day. Yeah. yeah so but if Tuesdays are good, then we'll, we'll try to work on that. Yeah. We can go back to work again. I'm going to try to um, new it. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> See how the eye fits the computer at work. Answer the phone anyway. I mean, I'm not in direct patient care, so it's okay. I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, um, would there be any merit to informing our state representative, state senator, about this activity or not? Not yet, I don't think. At some point, I think it's a good idea because you're going to the legislature, but I don't. You know, other than letting them know the committee exists, um, at this point, I don't think that there's much you could really talk about. Yeah. Um, but I always find it's good to let them know what's going on because eventually you'll need them to present the, uh, if it passes the town meeting, to, to get the bill in the legislature. And if they feel like they've been left out of it, that's not. That's well, not Dan Carey is going off, so we'll mm -hmm. have a new. Omar. Yeah. Omar will be the new. As, as in your state rep. State our state rep, and then yeah. we have Joe Comerford. Yeah. Okay. So, Senator. Senator. Yeah. Usually, is it usually in the house that where things start, or is it joint? It's 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 a joint process, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I think it's the house is often involved in the beginning, but then they meet as a committee joint. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We'll get them on board too. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Anybody else have anything else? Sally, Bill. You good for tonight? Do you have anything? No, good for tonight. I will be there next time in person. November 7th? Yep. Okay.
you want all of our email addresses that you said before. If you could give yeah. me your email address, that would be great. Anything else? Meeting adjourned? No, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.